This video is on the one population mean hypothesis test when sigma is unknown. We're going to be doing the critical value approach. The scenario goes that your friend believes that in one lake he was told that the trout are about 19 inches. So that's our mu. You don't think that's true, so you go fishing. What excuse? So you find that you fish and you catch 51 trout and you see that their mean length is 18.5 with a standard deviation of 3.2. Now since you're talking about the sample still, that means S is 3.2. You're going to need to know one of the sample standard or one of the standard deviations. If you know the sample, you're going to have S. It says the population, that's sigma. We want to test at the 5% significance level that means alpha is 0 0.05, whether the trout are actually less than 19 inches. Now, since we don't know sigma, what we're going to be doing is using a t-test. Just like our confidence intervals, if you don't know sigma, we use t. First step, first three, two steps are exactly the same as our other hypothesis test. State the null and the alternative. The null is always what they say it is. In this case, mu is 19. The alternative is what we're trying to test. Remember I said, is it less than? So mu is less than 19. Step two is just to restate our significance level, 0 0.05. The third step is our test statistic. Now since we don't know sigma, this time we're going to look at a t-score which is x bar, 18.5, minus mu, 19, divided by s this time, 3.2, divided by the square root of 51. So it's, remember, it's the same basic idea as our z score. Instead of sigma, we use s. To four decimal places, that is negative 1.1158. Now, like I said, we're going to do the critical value approach. The critical value approach, then, is our step four, finding the critical values. This is a left tail test because it's pointing to the left, which says all the rejection region is to the left. Remember, the rejection region is the alpha, so that's 0 .05. Now, we need to know the score, the t-score, that separates the rejection and the non-rejection region. Since we're doing a t-test, we're going to look at our t-table. T-table says we have to know our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. In this case, n is 51, so our degrees of freedom is 50. So we look at our table for 50 degrees of freedom across to 0 0.05, and you should get 1.676. Now, since it's a left tail test, remember it's going to just be the negative. Now, step five. We look to see if our step three is in the rejection region or the non-rejection region. Negative 1.11 is actually above negative 1.676, and it's in the non-rejection region. So we fail to reject. Since we fail to reject, remember just like the Z, if we fail to reject, we only have one.